Today, we're going to talk about guns in your short films. If you're watching this video, you're either here to learn how to use guns in your short films and edit them properly, or you're just bored. Just a disclaimer, I am not a professional. I have not worked on professional projects or movies or motion pictures. I'm just doing what I know how to do and showing you how I think it should be done. For us filmmakers, of course, not the actual big dogs, if that makes sense. So the first thing we're actually going to start covering is the acting part of shooting a gun in the scene. Typically in real life, when you shoot a gun, there's something that is called recoil. Recoil is pretty much the force that's knocking you back whenever you pull the trigger. Sometimes there isn't any recoil because you're strong as shit for some reason, or there's a lot of recoil, which indicates that it's either your first time shooting or that gun is too big for you to be handling. Case in point, a shotgun. Now, if you're working with actors and it's not just you making the videos, doing everything like how I did in the short film, you can have the actor hold the gun and you can smack it really hard. Not really hard to the point where you'll break it, but smack it enough with enough force to jolt them back. That force that's jolting them back, their arm, that's what will simulate the recoil. Now, if you're doing it on your own, and I, I do this a lot sometimes, even in my own time, just to practice, what I usually do is I just point the gun or whatever I'm using and just bang, like that. And rather than just flicking my wrist, I also add motion to my waist and my torso just to simulate how powerful the gun is, depending on what I'm using in the scene. Now, for this scene, we're gonna be using a handgun now let's let's say it's a nine millimeter so if i shoot it just one jolt just one little jolt back is now depending on what type of genre or what type of mood you want to set for the scene where you will be using a firearm it will vary with the recoil now if you wanted to do something more cartoonish or more stylistic or more comedic you can just or you just, that simple. It's really up to you and it's really preference whether your script is meant to be that way or not. The next thing we're gonna talk about is editing. Now, editing, it's not really much to it, but there are a lot of small details that could really make that scene or make that effect pop or make it whole, if that makes sense. But we have muzzle flash, shell casings, and lighting. We have none of those in real life because we are using a $2 prop. Now when you're editing any type of shooting scene or gun scene, the key things that are really important to remember, consistency, continuity, and lighting. Now for the consistency, you want the muzzle flash to stay not with the barrel, but stay where the barrel was when the gun was fired. If you have the muzzle flash follow the barrel, it would just look something like this. You don't want that. It stays in one spot for one or two frames and then the gun will jolt back. Continuity. If you are having a character shoot multiple times, you either can use the same muzzle flash or you can use a different one whether you change the camera angle. This is really important because say if I shot someone from this angle, but the camera was facing this way, that would make a big difference. You don't want to put a pistol muzzle flash with an assault rifle muzzle flash. Get what I'm saying? You get what I'm trying to go through? Another thing is lighting. This is like the more sophisticated part, but it's super easy to do. And that's what we're about to jump into right now. So let's hop into our editing software and then we'll get started. Why are you still looking at me? We're about to hop into the edit, you know what? Okay, so we're in our editing software and we have our clips in and we have our timeline. So now the first thing we're gonna do is color grade this footage. So what we wanna do when we're color grading, we're just gonna make this original footage darker in order to have the actual muzzle flash show and look better on screen. I 
after that, we're just going to change it to like a blue tint, make it a little bit more dramatic and just like play with the balances of the colors or whatnot. Could go to extra mile and also mess with the curves. I know DaVinci Resolve has a, a much better color grading um, software, not software, but a much better color grading technique than my software that I'm using, which is Premiere right now. Okay, so we got our footage color graded. Now it's actually time to work on the muzzle flash. So muzzle flashes usually only last about one frame. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to the frame where the gun is actually fired and you wanna select the muzzle flash. Uh, you can get some stock ones from you know YouTube or a website uh, called Cineflix or Cinepacks.com. I'll drop it in the description. But this is the muzzle flash that I'm gonna use right here. So let's go ahead and drag that over. Now I know what you're thinking, it's sideways, but don't worry, uh, there's some things that we can do that can actually like distort it or whatnot. Um, what I'm gonna use is the basic 3D, it's right here. And I know in DaVinci Resolve, it's gonna be called skew. I'm not sure what it'll be called in uh, other, other softwares. So what we're gonna do is actually like line it up with the barrel. So I'm just gonna change this. All right, so what you want to do after that, you want to change the blend mode to screen, or you could just change it to lighten. I like to use lighten depending on what this actual scene is, but lighten will actually work best in scenes that are color graded to be darker. And right here, we also have this little, like, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's that little square looking thing. Uh, Don't worry, we're going to handle that in a little bit. Now it's just time to clean it up. So we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna get rid of this whole little square area. So for completing an actual muzzle flash or a gun effect, you're gonna need a shell casing, which most guns actually have them. Uh, this one I got for free on Cinepax, I believe. I will also keep a link in the description, so keep that in mind. So what we're really gonna need to do, we're actually gonna have to flip this so the actual shell casing flies in the right direction. Now keep in mind, um, shell casings, they don't always fly in the same direction, but for this time, we're just gonna need it to eject going to the left of the screen. Then we're gonna scale that down. So an actual life-size shell casing, not a super big one. That'd be very hilarious and goofy. And right now we're just gonna have to color grade it to match the actual atmosphere of the scene. So now we're just gonna duplicate that. And then we're gonna split it here for that one frame that the muzzle flash is on. All right, so on the duplicated clip, we're gonna remove all the color grading and we're gonna drag a crop. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mask. So for the mask, for a muzzle flash, you do like a little star pattern or just something really jagged. So it's not too perfect. So here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna draw a little star shaped mask. And we have our star shape mask and all we're gonna have to do is just tweak it, make sure everything looks good. So what you wanna do for the crop, you just wanna invert it. That way only the inside is gonna show. So now we go back to our little color grading section. And what we're gonna do is gonna bring up the exposure, bring down the contrast. And we're gonna change the temperature to a more orange or yellowish tint 
to actually match the fire or a muzzle flash that came out of the gun. Okay, so now we have our mask. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the feather of it. That way it looks like some natural light. We're gonna play with the expansion so the light can actually react with the environment like how a real muzzle flash would. And as you can see, that's how it looks. So now to get rid of that square that was around the muzzle flash, we're gonna keyframe the opacity, go a little bit further and just bring it all the way down. And just like that, we have no square around the muzzle flash. Now what we're gonna do are the blood effects. So the blood effects are gonna be the really easy but sophisticated part. So we're just going to take some green screen blood effects that you can get from anywhere, YouTube, Cinefax, wherever you can find it. We're going to key out the green screen and just color grade that to match everything. Then we're just going to get a bullet hole transparent image and we're also going to do the same thing that we did to the blood effects. And then we're just going to hand track it on with keyframes. After we hand track it on, you're just gonna add some directional blur or motion blur, and you're gonna keyframe that to move with your subject. And it should look something like this. And that's how you do the simple blood effects. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I had fun making this so if you guys have any ideas on the film effects or just filmmaking in general i will share what i know how to do in tutorials so you guys can do it as well and i would love to see how you guys take on the things that i show you and put your own twist on it um my next tutorial i have no idea what it would be because i have so many things that i know how to do but i just don't know where to start so if you guys have anything in mind please let me know and i'll see if i can cover it in a good amount of time that's it get out of my face bye